All right, guys, so today we're going to be covering nested CRUD. And the good news is if you mastered CRUD capabilities already, nested CRUD is essentially going to be just another layer on top of that. But um, there shouldn't be anything too new uh, to tackle here. So it, it, the idea of nested CRUD, um, if we just want to use a tangible example, is um, let's think about our school interface example where we had a school object. And within that, we had student um, students that can be, I guess, nested within that school or have a relationship with that school. Um, so in that case, um, you would have student objects and you'd have school objects that um, you could both create students individually and update them, but also you might want to update your school um, to add students or remove students or uh, update other details on the school. So again, this is a common uh, design pattern that you will encounter when you're creating uh, more full function websites. Um, so in this case, let's go over the example on the curriculum. So again, I'm just be walking through this um, the curriculum code. So if you guys want to follow along, definitely do so. Um, let's begin then. So I need a coding window, which seems to have disappeared. There it is. All right, so I have my VS code. So again, we're going to go through the motions of creating a Django project from scratch. Again, hopefully this doesn't get too repetitive, but um, a lot of this is going to be practice and uh, just to make sure you guys understand all the steps that are needed. So let me bring up my terminal and let's go through the motions here. So if I can kind of query my audience, uh, Brian Jensen, could I ask what the first step uh, I'd want to do here? You want to do um, create your virtual environment. You got it. So to do that, I'm going to do Python dash M uh, VNV. Um, I like to call my virtual environments virtual. Distinguish the name. All right, that got created. Where it will get created. It's taking its time. There we go. Now I'm going to get into my virtual environment. To do that. I'm going to do source name my virtual environment, which is virtual in this case, um, slash bin activate. All right, cool. I uh, notice I'm in my virtual environment now. Uh, let's pull the audience some more. Uh, Jeremy, can you tell me the next step I need to do to get a Django project up and running? Uh, the next step is you're going to um, do the go admin create. I can't remember sure. where it's a Python manage py create. Um, so that is a step I will need to do. But uh, again, we're creating a Jenga project from scratch. So creating my virtual environment. Um, what's does anyone else know the next step I'll need to do? Install, need to install Django. Install Django. Yep. So uh, since this is a new project, I uh, need to install Django. So pip install Django. Give that a run. All right. So we got Django version 3.17, I think. Um, all right. I can install. Since I know I'm going to be using Postgres, I'm going to install. Postgres or a psycho PG, so psycho PG2. All right, that, that's good. All right, so I've installed uh, the items that I install. Um, let's get more audience participation. Uh, Isaiah Bragg, what do I, what should I do next? Or what's something I should do next? Um, we need to start our app. And our how do we do that? Um, the command. That's right. Yeah. It's it, again, this is all like a lot of Django is memorization. There's no other way to really. Yeah. So it's going to Django admin start project and whatever you want to call it. Yep. So let's go back to our curriculum page, kind of follow their examples. So in this case, uh, we installed Django. We want to start projects. So uh, this is something we've mentioned before. If you add your project name and then add a period after that, you will um, not have nested directories. And this is something I prefer. Um, it's kind of up to you. If you want to have that nested directory, you're definitely um, free to do so. Just make sure you understand that you got to go one directory deep, deeper to um, run your commands. So in this case, we want to call it old cohorts. So we'll follow suit, old cohorts. All right, and then put that period there. We can enter. All right, so notice in my uh, 
file explorer, I get an old cohorts uh, folder, which is my project, but notice that my manage.py uh, is on the base level, as in it's not in that folder. It's because we had this period, so we saved us ourselves a nested folder in this case. So, um, all right, we did that. Let's go back to our curriculum page. We want to create an app. So again, the command to do that is going to be here. So I'm just going to copy it since they provide it for us on the curriculum page. Copy that. So again, Python manage py um, start app and then the name of the app um, that we want to create. So in this case, our app is going to be called cohorts and students. And I run that. All right, create a folder for me. Notice this is my app folder. This is my project folder. Um, all right, let's proceed. Um, they give us some models. So it's kind of nice of them to provide all this for us so we don't have to do it ourselves. So I'm going to drop that into my app models. UI file. Um, as always, whenever you're copying code, make sure you understand, kind of give it a good scan and understand what it's doing. So let's take a look at our models here. We have a cohort model, um, which has a cohort name, start date, end date. So we have a note here. I guess realistically, we want this to be a date field, but in this case, just keep it simple. I think we're using a char field. Um, but otherwise, yeah, cohort simply has a name, start date, end date. Um, and then we have a student model. So a student model um, it's going to be associated with a cohort. So I guess we can't just have a free floating student. They had to be assigned to a cohort. And then a student will have a first name and a last name. So pretty straightforward models there. Um, notice we have a foreign key. So this is um, the, the nested cred part in terms of a student will be associated um, within a cohort. And a cohort can have multiple students. Um, but a student cannot be part of a, cannot be part of multiple cohorts. And that is why this is not a many-to-many -many relationship. It's a one-to-many relationship in that one cohort can have multiple students, but one student cannot be part of multiple cohorts. So since we have a one-to-many, we could simply use a foreign key, um, like so. And all right, so our models look pretty straightforward. Let's actually run our migrations. So following the curriculum page, it's kind of guiding us here. So I'm going to copy this, Python manage my make migrations. So, um, if you have multiple apps, you might want to specify the app name. Um, so I might do something like cohorts and students. But in this case, since I only have one app, make migrations will just get the migrations from that app. So no changes detected. Um, all right. No surprise there. And then let's migrate. Okay, so I think maybe I will need to, let me double check, make migrations, cohorts, and students. Ah, uh, that is what I missed. So notice that when I try to run migrations on my app, it says, hey, there's no app with that name. Reason being is because I need to go to my settings and actually tell my project that I have an app called cohorts and students. So definitely easy to forget steps <clears throat> as I did here. Uh, that was not intentional, but you know, Django kind of guides you and tells you what you need to do. So did that, um, I should update my database also. Since I'm in this file, so I want to do Postgres. And let's give the database name. I don't know if they tell us what database they want. Whatever, I'm going to create my own name. It shouldn't matter. Um, in this case, I'll give it a name of cohorts. cohorts. All right, so again, I specified I want to use Postgres. And then my database name is going to be cohorts. Again, you can name it whatever you want. Just make sure you are consistent with it. All right, so I added my app name. So that is something that I was miss missing before. So if I save this file and run make migrations again without the app name, of course, I'm going to make do I need a database? Yes. So let's create our database, create db cohorts. All right, now that's done, let's run make migrations. All right, there we go. So now that we actually specified what app we wanted and we created our database, we were able to um, make migrations and it creates our model for um, cohort and student. And now we can actually push that to our database, manage.py migrate. All right, there we go. Of this. Um, all right, so now we've created our model. We pushed our model changes to our database. 
So let's uh, kind of scan the rest of our curriculum page. So we migrate. Oh, yes, yeah, so this is stuff I missed. Uh, migrate. All right, let's actually create some seed data. So I'm going to copy all this code. Um, let's go back to my VS code. Again, um, it's his personal preference. Um, the way the curriculum says is you want to get into your shell and kind of type this all out. I just like you creating a separate seed file that I can edit in VS code. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, you guys are free to do whichever uh, one makes sense to you. So I'm going to put this seed file next to my manage.py file. So let's create a new file. Call it seeds.py. Make sure that's where I want it to be. All right, so seeds.py is right next to my manage.py. I'm going to paste the code that I just copied from the curriculum page. So cohorts and students models. Yep. All right, so this is going to create one cohort called Bravo and then save it to a database and then create some students. So we have a student named Charlie and then some generic students, student one, two, three, four, five, and six. Two cohorts and a bunch of students. Gotcha. Students. And cohorts. Okay, so we have Bravi, Bravo cohort and Charlie cohort, and then some students that are going to be associated with them. Um, so looks like the first four students will be in Bravo, and the next two will be in Charlie. Darnell and Arthur will be in Charlie. All right, I'm going to save that, and then let's run this. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Python manage UI shell. And I'm going to feed it my seeds file. Seeds that um, <clears throat> What's the issue? No. And that is because, let's see. Looks like I'm in the wrong directory here, so let's figure that out. Two, three. No, it should be in the correct directory. That's on um, manage. Oh, something is amiss here. Where's your uh? Where's your virtual environment at? My virtual environment is nested. I see. Thank you. Good call there. All right. So I actually don't want to run my server. So let's get out of it. Um. Yeah. So my virtual environment was in the wrong folder. So I pulled it out and then let's um, try to run our seed file again. So manage.py, we want to do shell seeds.py. Okay, no error. So it looks like those students and cohorts hopefully got created correctly. Um, let's go back to our page. All right, so we create our data. Now we want to update our URL paths. So let's do a quick copy and paste. URL pattern. So this can go on my project.url. So that's old cohorts URLs. And I'm going to paste the URL patterns here. So again, we're going to create a cohorts route, and that's going to look at our app URLs it's for more directions. So let's go here. So notice we got to create our URL, fi URL file in our app. We'll do URLs.py. <clears throat> now we got to get some definition there. So again, I'm just copying from the curriculum. Copy all this here and paste this here. All right, so let's actually take a look at the routes that we are uh, attempting to create. We've commented out some uh, routes, so we'll look at those later. But the base ones we have is the default routing. Again, this will be slash cohorts. Uh, we'll take us to a cohort list. Um, if we go to slash new or sl cohort slash new, we should be able to create a new cohort. Um, also, we want to view detail. We should go to the, the ID of it. ID edit should be able to edit the cohort. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. Again, very similar to what we've done before with CRUD. So, all right, that looks good. Um, all right, let's we talk about these routes. Now let's actually create our views. So a lot of code to copy here.
All right, I'm gonna copy this. Again, a lot of copy and pasting, but hopefully you understand what we were copy and pasting. So routes and views. All right, so we create a bunch of views. Um, Okay, so we have a get cohort help method, then we have cohort list, detail, new cohort. Okay, so all this, again, should be pretty familiar in how we um, read, update, uh, delete, and create new items. All right, so we need to create um, some of these templates, I bet. Yep, so our next step is to create our templates folder and call it cohorts. So... I think this might be a typo. Hey, Encore, what about that step before it? The uh, forms.py? Yep. That will definitely be something we need. And just paste. All right, so we got our forms that you should be using on that. Yep, cohort form. Um, but yeah, I think I'm pretty sure this is a typo here. Um, this name should be match your app name. It shouldn't be cohorts, it should be cohorts and students. Um, we could verify that, but in my app, I'm going to create a templates folder. Folder, folder. So, uh, there, create a folder called templates. And then within that folder, I'm going to create a folder called cohorts. All right. Um, all right. So now that I have that cohorts and students template folder. Let's add a new file in there. Let's call it. What should we call it? Cohorts lists. All right. Make sure that name matches. So cohorts lists. Cohorts list. That looks good. Uh, copy all this. I'm just going to go ahead and create a base uh, template. So this is something we've done before. Again, I don't think this is in the curriculum necessarily, but hopefully I should be familiar with it. So let's create a base file called base.html. And I'll miss that there. Base. I'm use my snippet that I always use. Um, it just has a bare bones HTML template in there. So again, just have a um, HTML head tag. Uh, title tag, this will be customizable. So in this case, I'm going to create a block. That block will be block title. And then I'm going to have another block here. Let's call that always remember to end your box. So end block. So I created a base HTML. I don't think there's much else I need to create in my base. And then my cohorts list is going to extend that. So it extends and then base.html. All right, so we want to give it a title. Uh, let's give her page a title, the block. And um, just to be clear, we're, we're extending a template. So we're having a base HTML, which will be like a generic um, look for our page and then fill in the content as we wish. So in this case, it will be, let's call it cohorts. Um, all right, and then our content will be here. So let's create a new block. The content and then that will be named main content since that's what our base has. And right. And, yeah. <clears throat> All right, hopefully I didn't miss any steps there, but basically filling in the main content and title with our cohorts list page. 
All right, so I copy that. Let's create a cohort detail. Scroll down a bit, and then we have a cohort form that HTML also. So new file, cohort detail. <clears throat> and then let me copy and paste this, copy and paste. All right, so again, a bunch of copy and pasting. Make sure you understand where you're copy and pasting, but this is just going to show the cohort um, name and show the various parameters, start date, end date, and then maybe have some additional um, form um, fields. So. OK, and then cohort form, Something simpler. All right, when you file cohort underscore form.html. All right, so hopefully I should take care of all the template pages that we need to create. There. All right, so I think hopefully we follow this correctly. We create our pages. Um, again, I believe this is a typo, but if someone wants to verify um, by copying that, all right, so fire up your server. All right, let's see, let's see this in action. Hopefully we have no major errors. Python manage.py run server. Um, yeah. And we have errors. URLs, because we did not include that in our settings or in our here. So we want to do from okay. that should be good to go. Uh, page not found because we don't have that path set. So we can go to cohorts. All right, templates does not exist. So it is looking for that cohorts. Um, actually, oops, but, all right, so I'm going to rename that and follow the tutorial. I'm actually not sure why this is cohorts and not the app name. Does anyone happen to know? Yeah, again, I, I was on an impression that this nested folder in your templates has to match your app name, but for some reason, we are not using that pattern. And I'm a little confused, but we'll proceed anyway. Um, I think it's because later on you're supposed to do another file in temp or another folder in templates for students. You have separate files or folders for cohorts and students. Gotcha. That would make sense from the organizational standpoint. Um, I guess I'm not sure how it's finding that correct name of that uh, folder. But anyway, um, so we have cohorts and then we have uh, the cohorts listed. So we can view details. Bravo started on January 4th, 2017. Uh, we have Charlie, we can also edit on the details. So again, basic functionality. Um, this should be familiar to many of us. We create a new cohort, so let's create. Uh, let's create. Cor, can you go back real quick and just show me what folder you changed there again, the folder yeah. name? So oh. I apologize about that. Um, I had assumed that uh, our nested folder, so let me scroll up, where to go? Or where is it? Right here. So we want to create a templates folder. And inside of that, we want to create a nested folder called cohorts. Um, I was on an impression that that folder had to be named um, the same as your app. But in this case, that is not true. And I'm trying to figure out where that's coming from. So the app name stayed the same, but you just changed the templates folder name. Correct. Yeah. So again, just uh, following whatever was on the curriculum page should give you the correct result. I tried to ad lib there. Um, but yeah, I'm still kind of wondering why we could just name it cohorts and not the app name. But it works. So let's figure that out later. Okay. So we've done up to this point. Now we're getting to our nested crow. All right. So this is the idea where we have um, objects nested within other objects. 
So again, our school example, we have students that belong to a cohort. So we're gonna add additional routes here. So that's stuff that we had commented out before. Let's go to our app URLs and kind of look at our path now. Would it be impossible for us to get like a quick break? Oh, absolutely. Let's take a, yeah, sure. Uh, let's take a, yeah, this shouldn't take too much longer, but let's take a, uh, yeah, let's take a quick five minute break and then uh, wrap up the lecture before lunch. All right, so to answer my own question, um, the reason that folder can be named cohorts is because that's what we're referencing in our views. So since we're referencing cohort slash and then the HTML page, it's looking for a cohorts folder named such. So I think uh, Tom said best practice is to normally name it um, at the same as your app name, but you can actually name it whatever you want. So in this case, we call it cohorts because we're gonna have a different folder for students um, just to organize our files better. So um, yeah. That's, uh, that's the reason why we create a cohorts folder um, in our templates folder. All right, so let's continue on with our nested card example. So I'm gonna go back to our app URLs and I uncommented um, the additional paths that uh, were included. Let's actually talk about these. So let's look at the URL and kind of see how the format um, kind of is similar from what we had before. So in this case, each cohort will have uh, a list of students that we can view in it. So notice that we still have the base cohort ID, and then we just append a slash students on it. Um, and this pattern is very similar. So we do student slash new, which is very similar to our base uh, for a cohort, where we do slash new to do a new cohort. On this case, we will do um, students slash new to create a new student within the given cohort. Then uh, when we get into individual students, notice our URL, URL contains multiple parameters. We'll have one for cohort ID, then we're gonna um, insert students and then have a student ID. So in, in this manner, we're gonna be passing multiple parameters to our, our views. So let's go to our views um, or our route handlers. So in this case, um, our cohorts only take in a cohort ID, but if we go back to our curriculum page and look at our additional um, content, let me copy this and talk about it. So copy this, this is what we're adding to our views file. So I'm gonna append it to what we have. All right, so let's take a look at student detail, for example. Notice that student detail takes in a request, takes in a cohort ID and takes in a student ID. And these values are being passed from the URL. So that's my URL. Notice the name here has to match the parameter that you're taking into your function. So then if I change this to like blah, then um, the edit function would take in a blah parameter and a student ID parameter. In this case, we wanna name our variables more sensible. So cohort ID makes most sense. All right, so let's actually take a look at our views and how we're using these values. So for our student list, we're taking a cohort ID. <clears throat> we get the cohort from the ID and then simply list all the students. So nothing too complicated going on here. Um, we're using the cohort and then showing the students for that cohort. When we get into student detail, as we noted, we get past the student ID. So this is where we actually um, can use that student ID with the cohort ID so that we can look inside that cohort and get the student from that cohort. All right, so um, in this case, we get a student, we get a cohort, and then we pass that to our student detail. Again, um, hopefully this shouldn't be too, too hard to understand. Um, definitely ask questions if you do uh, have any questions, but for the most part, we're just simply appending onto our URL. So we're doing slash students and then student list, or sorry, we're, go to my URL. We're just doing slash students and appending like a student ID to view that particular student that's within that cohort. Encore, don't forget to uh, import the student and student form in the views. Good call. Um, I will get that error. So I need student and student form. Thank you for that. Um, all right, so let's save that. Let's get my server running again. And we'll kind of see this in action. So we're in a virtual environment. Do Python manage.py run server. Server. Okay, everything looks good. 
let's go back to our base. All right, we have all of our cohorts. Let's create a new cohort. Uh, let's call it uh, November, even though it's on a past cohort. Cohorts, November. Start date it was what, Feb 1st, so 2021. Hopefully, I have a format right here. And our end date, I believe, is in May. I think 14th or 15th. Let's go with 15th. Support. Okay, cool. We created our November cohort. Let's go back to our lists. There it is. All right, so let's actually add some students here. So if I go to November, we have this edit cohort um, link. So now, sorry, let's go back. Um, I guess we're going to have to go with students. All right, so we need to create our student uh, templates. So student details, student form, and student lists. So let's create a new folder or copy this folder. Rename that to students. Students. And rename these. All right, so we have student lists and copy that. So we have student detail here. Students lists. All right, so just copy and pasting. Hopefully you guys are following along. So we have uh, all of our students for our particular cohorts. We have a student detail form or page, so student detail. Copy and paste that to our main content block. And finally, we have a student form that's going to be right here. Okay. Um, all right, save that. Let's see if this works now. All right, there we go. So our November cohort has no students. So let's add, add a new student. Um, we have a drop down, so we can select which cohort we want to go get into. So let's go November. Let's go. Um, Kyle Nagel is a student in this cohort, I believe. Let's save. And then, all right, so this is a student detail for Kyle. Um, he's a member of November. We could edit that. So let's say he was in Bravo. We could save that. And then that did not actually edit. Why didn't that edit? So Bravo. Save. All right. So there's something wrong in our code. So let's actually try to debug this since we figured it out. Figure it out. So I went to edit student. I changed uh, Kyle's cohort to be Bravo. And I hit save. But it actually did not update his cohort here. So that's a little curious. Let's go to our views. Let's try to figure this out. Um, all right, so we're going to edit. And da, 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 da. all right, so we get the cohort form, cohort ID. Okay, so I think the issue is our core ID is not being updated. So if we go to edit student, Notice that our cohort ID in our URL is still three. So it's thinking that um, when we submit the form, it's actually going to use the URL as opposed to the actual value. So I think that's the reason why this code is not working as we'd expect. I guess normally, you know, you wouldn't be shifting students around doing cohorts. So maybe that's not a real use case, but let's actually try to get this to work. Cause I think, you know, let's say we're managing students and we had the wrong information. We should be able to update that um, through our UI. So notice that we're passing in a cohort ID to our edit cohort, and that's the co that's the ID that's going to be used for to get the cohort. Um, but in this case, that is not what I want to do here. So let's actually try and modify this. So Could you look at edit student instead of edit cohort. Sorry, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yep, I was looking at the wrong thing, but essentially it is getting the cohort ID again from the passed in cohort ID, which is from the URL. So it's using the wrong cohort in that case. 
So when we go to save that student, um, it's going to save it. Let's see. So it might just be a display issue. So let's actually check this a little further. So I'm going to go back to my cohorts list and go to Bravo and I'll look at students. Okay, so it looks like Kyle was changed to be with uh, Bravo. So it looks like the saving is work, working correctly. The display is incorrect because again, it's using the URL and using that cohort ID to show what cohort they, that student is part of. So if I change this to three, three, yeah, it's gonna change that to November. So this value is coming from the URL. It's not actually coming from the student record. So that's maybe something we want, might wanna change. Um, should be pretty easy to change that. So let me actually try doing it. Student detail. Is that because you didn't change something in the base HTML or specifically the student HTML? So one of the students. Um, I think it's in the student detail. Notice that student detail takes in a cohort ID. Uh, actually, that's not where it's coming from. It takes in a cohort, right? So this cohort object is being passed from, if we look at edit student or even student detail, or student detail. Student detail is getting a cohort ID. This cohort ID is coming from the URL. So if I go to my URLs and look at uh, where is it, student detail, this cohort ID is what's being used to display the cohort on the detail page, which isn't, I guess, maybe isn't the best way to do it. Because again, if I change like the cohort, if I change the cohort URL and change it to two, like it updates, it says Kyle Nagel is a member of Charlie when, when that's not actually true. So we should actually be getting the cohort off the actual user information rather than relying on the URL. So if I want to make this change, let me try to see if I can do it. So I'm gonna to go to my student detail page. So here we see member of cohort cohort ID. So let's actually change this to students and cohorts. I wanna see if this will work. So let's refresh this page. All right, so we did get Bravo here, but it's not the best looking format. So let's do cohort.name. All right, that's not a valid parameter. Cohort name is the name that we want. So go back to my views, no, back to my detail. So cohort. Name. All right, so now notice that we're pulling the cohort off the student directly. So the URL shouldn't be the one dictating what we display. So if I Refresh this. Notice this says Bravo, even though my URL is pointed to two, which in that case was Charlie. So if I change this to like three, three again, if you remember, was November, and I refresh the page. Notice it still says Bravo, because that is in fact what we assigned Kyle to. So if we actually want to change this, I'm going to go back to the edit student, change it to November now. Hit save. All right, that's correct. So I edit Kyle's data again, put him in Charlie, hit save. All right, now it's actually updating correctly. So Again, this was something that was we're using the URL to determine the cohort, but I think it's probably better to actually use the actual student record because that's the data that we, that's the actual true data of the record. All right, so that's pretty much all, you know, that's kind of wanted to show you for nested cred. Again, it's not anything too much new. The only new concept, I guess, was adding a foreign key and tying a, um, a nested model to an existing model and then being able to access that access the records through the URL. So um, again, I was just navigating through, like if I wanna go to my second cohort and list all the students, notice the, just understand the way we formatted it is we have cohorts, we pass the cohort ID, and then if we wanna view particular students, we can. So we have students, click on Arthur, Arthur has an ID of six. So it's mostly just understanding how to format your URLs and how to correctly extract the correct um, parameters. In this case, six is our student ID and two is our cohort ID. So that is magically done through our URLs so that we know our cohort ID and our student ID based on the format of our URL. And then we could use those values to do whatever we want in our um, route handlers. All right, so again, this is just you know, typical design you'll see for um, various sites. So we have uh, three um, three challenges for tonight. Um, so let's take a quick look at them. Let's look at cars and brands. So let me click on that. All right. 
So in this case, uh, we're going to you know, give you practice of creating uh, a project from scratch. So in this case, we're going to ask you to create um, a schema. So you're going to create your own models. So if you kind of think about how cars and brands are kind of tied together. So if you think about a brand like a brand of Ford, Ford has a bunch of model car models within its brand of Ford. So you might have like the Fusion, um, the Focus. Again, I don't know, active Ford brands. There might be the F-150. Um, so again, there's many many brands that, sorry, many models that one particular brand can have. So that's where you have your nested um, one-to-many relationship. So Ford, for example, has a bunch of brand, or the brand of Ford has a bunch of models. And then Chrysler or GM or Toyota will be a different brand. They, have, they might have their own specific models um, nested within them. So we're just gonna ask you to current, you know, again, come up with that design, uh, understand how brands and models are tied together and then um, basically just create a website to be able to add new models to different brands or create new brands and then uh, create new models underneath them. All right, so that should be um, pretty straightforward. Um, similar to what we did with cohorts and students, um, we're just kind of, instead of cohorts, we have um, car or car brands, and then instead of students, we have models. Um, beer reviews, um, this is, I guess, a slightly different uh, design, but um, essentially it's the same. We're gonna have the ability to um, log in and log out. So this is something we did with um, our past challenges, but we also wanna be able to create um, beer objects and then have reviews on them. So for example, we create a beer called uh, Michelob Light. We might have a bunch of reviews. So like I might be able to review uh, Michelob Light and then also I should be able to review other beers I want to. Um, so just think about how that, that those will be structured. And as a, I guess, more of a stretch challenge, we have a meetup, um, meetup challenge. Uh, I don't know if you guys have used meetup.com. It's a great, great um, site to kind of find similar interests uh, groups out there and meet new people. Um, kind of hard with COVID right now, but um, kind of just browse meetup.com. It's easy to sign up and kind of navigate. But the idea of meetup is that you have um, groups that users can create. Like I could create a board game group or I create like a donut, donut lovers group. And then members can, or users can sign up for groups. So like if I wanna join an existing board game group, I should be able to join it. I should also be able to create my own group and have other users join it if they're interested in the group that I've created. So this one is gonna take a little more time. Uh, it's gonna be a little more detailed. Um, in this case, we have users, groups, and events. So a group can have multiple events. So like I might schedule an event for next Saturday and then one for next month. Um, so you're gonna have more, more than just two models interacting here. So you can have users, groups, and events. Um, so as I said, this is more of a stress challenge. It definitely will take you a lot of time. Um, so don't, don't necessarily feel like you had to finish that one night. Um, it's something that you know, might take the next few days to kind of focus on. I believe it's listed for the next few days. Let's check tomorrow's schedule. Um, all right, so we have a new project, SMART. But yeah, so Meetup uh, is going to be more of an extended um, challenge, though. So take your time with it. Don't feel like you got to finish all three. Definitely uh, tackle car, cars and brands and beer reviews. Those should be more straightforward, um, pretty similar to what we did with our example today. And the Meetup, um, definitely attempt that because it's just it's more challenging, uh, more intricate. But again, it's be more experienced working with message crud. What questions do you guys have? All right. Um, as I said, if you if you guys did well with the CRUD um, example from the past day, past couple of days, um, nested CRUD shouldn't be too much more challenging. Just kind of understand that you have multiple variables that you're dealing with, and you can use those to um, access um, objects correctly. Again, we did something that was two levels deep, so we had cohorts and students. Uh, theoretically, you can have you know five levels deep or infinite level deep. Um, it just depends on your use case. So for example, you might have, you know, a cohort and like we, you might have a company. Like, so we have code platoon and within that we have cohorts, but then there might be, you know, let's say I start my own company called uh, code mission and I have cohorts in that. Like I can have three levels there. I would have a company, I'd have cohorts and then students. Um, but again, that could get as deep as you want it to. It just kind of comes back to how you need to organize your data. But otherwise the process should be the same in terms of nesting items within other items. Okay, any last questions? All right, sounds like you guys are ready to tackle nested cred. I'm gonna stop.